I never wanted to write poetry. I only wanted to manage my pain, stuff my hurt into the curves of letters, consonants that beat like fists to make us all feel better. We've been strategically positioned for failure, so they're surprised when we succeed. Be careful not to confuse humility with defeat. Don't make judgments based on what you see. Still waters still run deep, and you best to sit still if you've got shaky feet. You best to keep quiet if you're not sure what to speak. Your silence won't protect you, and it will not set you free. As for me, I want a cheap thundercloud, Che Guevara, Harriet Tubman's daughter. So I feel right at home with my Hamilton College supporters. And if God be for us, that makes us unstoppable. If it looks impossible, if it sounds illogical, that keeps things exciting. We don't blink at obstacles. We don't shrink at threats. We don't rescind our statements. We don't expect you to understand if your vision ain't there yet. And yes, times do get hard. And I still hit my knees, call out to Almighty God. He told me, girl, get up, get dressed, put your good shoes on because the war is not over. You gotta love all of my people no matter where they are from that freestyle cypher on the corner to the rising academic superstar. Use your words to remind them who they are and like soft velvet gloves over brass knuckles, baby, we hit hard. Surprise, we go far across the spectrum of a lyrical refrain. Honey, this is what you get when you mix Cornell West with Lil Wayne. Malcolm X meets Queen Elizabeth's reign. The House of Representatives meets the House of Pain. The Shaolin Temple and the Clan of Wu-Tang. I do my thing. I am one half master, one half runaway slave. I am Pecos Bill Paul Bunny meets Apache Indian Brave. I will scalp you just to get to your brain. So if there is a flesh wound, then you find yourself in pain. I'm Professor X. Or you could just call me the doctor. I am Lena Horn meets Lady Gaga. We go further, we hit harder. I am Carmen Electra mixed with Patricia Hill Collins, the highest of heaven swinging low to the earth. The boy from the mobile home trailer park met a girl by in high fashion. I was the accident that happened. In other words, I was what got birthed. Things got noisy like the Titans was clashing. Bobo Hill Dread Rasta meets heavy metal thrasher. A beautiful disaster. They work hard, we work faster. I'm your favorite video vixen and your favorite TV preacher. I am both, yet I am neither. I'm Crystal Lee, it's nice to meet ya. What's up, Hamilton? <laughs> Woo! So, I'm here today to talk to you about the power of poetry and spoken word. And you're going to have to bear with me because I'm coming to you live, fresh from the United Nations, where just yesterday, in celebration of the International Day of the Girl, nearly 1,000 girls and girl supporters took over the UN for the third annual Girls Speak Out. Now, the Speak Out is a performance that's based on girls' lives, artwork, and lived experiences. So, how did poetry and performance end up in a place like the UN, and why does it matter? It's really about power. So often, political policy is developed by a small group of the privileged and powerful. And this group is far removed from the communities that that policy will ultimately impact and affect. Yesterday's performance created an opportunity for the girls to make accessible in concrete ways to the most vulnerable among us, which is so often girls, more, more particularly girls of color. And at the same time, Yesterday's show created an opportunity for those girls to engage and speak their truths directly to those in power. So, it was the words and lives of the girls that formed the point of connection. How do your words and your life connect? That's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Because as a professor and as a poet, I am deeply invested in language and how we use it. Like my good friend and fellow poet Tony Keith says, I believe that words have power. He's right. And I'm here to share with you two ideas that are crucial to understanding the power of spoken word poetry and creating the world that we want to live in. So here's idea number one, ready? Spoken word poetry functions as a tool that we can use to achieve social justice. So often, I get young, up and coming poets and they say, oh, what's the secret formula? I want to do this poetry thing. And I tell them there is no secret, but there is a formula. You ready? You can't be a dope spoken word poet if you do not write and you do not speak. It is not very glamorous, but it is very true. Discipline and habit far outweigh inspiration any day of the week. Now, at the same time, I require the students in my classroom to write and speak on a daily basis. Writing and speaking clearly and effectively helps us articulate our beliefs and who it is we think we truly are. Writing and speaking are how we place ourselves in this world. Writing and speaking is how we place ourselves in relationship to one another. So whether it's something as simple as posting a caption on an Instagram photo, or updating a Facebook status, or tagging Dr. E on your, you know, on your Twitter hashtag, mm -hmm, find me, I'm there. Um, even these small ways determine where we stand and, and who we stand with. So be careful about the words you choose to answer to. Be conscious of the words you speak over who you are. 
because yes, our words have creative power, and I believe that each and every one of us has the authority to speak things into existence over our own lives and over the lives of those around us. Each of us has the power to speak things that be not as though they were. Now, a great deal of my work is rooted in this educational theory, believe it or not, right? Um, and it's called critical pedagogy. So simply put, pedagogy is the art of teaching and learning. Critical pedagogy then insists that we connect our concepts of knowledge to our concepts of power. Education must involve social action. It is so much more than a teacher simply depositing information into a student. Instead, the most effective moments of learning occur when there is an exchange of information and ideas between a teacher and a student. Now, to envision education as this sort of transaction completely disrupts the traditional notions of power that shape most of our learning experiences, okay? The, the teacher is no longer the only authority on a subject. Instead, the student is actively contributing to their own learning process. So I take this theory and apply it to my spoken word practice. And that means that the teacher and the student, or the artist and the audience member, are always collaborating. We are actively co-constructing this performance event. Anybody who claims to be invested in social justice must also be committed to social responsibility. Again, it is not very glamorous, but it is very true, okay? We hold each other accountable for what happens or what doesn't happen in this space. Now, part of what makes spoken word poetry and performance so powerful is that it draws attention to our embodied power relationships, the very relationships that it also seeks to disrupt. Our bodies determine so much of our lives. Performance demands that we acknowledge the body of the artist. It is urgent, it is tangible, it is here, it is undeniable. There is no abstract when it comes to embodied experience. No matter what the content of my poetry is, you are receiving that content translated through my physical body and your own personal context. Our bodies determine our identities and how we perform those identities and which of those performances get applause or get punished. So if we claim to really want to create lasting social change in our communities, if we claim to want to achieve some sort of social justice, we must first begin by analyzing and re-examining how we relate to one another, both on stage and off stage. It is these daily interactions that shape power. Which brings me to idea number two. Spoken word poetry and performance teach us about ourselves and about each other. Now, I don't know if I have any hip hop heads in the house. Yes, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you. But if I do, can y'all help me out? There are four elements of hip hop, right? Do you know what they are? Extra credit if you know what they are. The DJ, the MC, the graffiti artist, the B-boy, B-girl. Now the unofficial fifth element of hip-hop is known as the knowledge of self. KRS-One, hip-hop pioneer, he said, know thyself and you will know the universe and God. Spoken word is how I know who I am and who I am not. It helps me to analyze and cope with the world around me and it reconnects me directly to my creator. Spoken word for me is the intersection between the physical and the spiritual, between the analytical, intellectual, and the creative imagination. Spoken word invites us to explore our identities and the way that those identities impact our lives. It's really all about a rehearsal. In a short and intense amount of concentrated time and energy, one spoken word piece can slice through these massive concepts of race, gender, social class, and allow us the opportunity to co-create a new meaning. We can remix these master narratives that so often dominate and oppress us. We can re recreate new meaning to solve old problems. And this is a messy, painful process, y'all. It is not the glossy finished product. This is rehearsal, and rehearsal is the part that requires the performer to consider how their performance is viewed from another person's perspective. Okay, this is the part that I, I have to ask, how, how does what I'm doing up here look to the person sitting way in the back over there? Wh where do we connect? Where do we disconnect? What is it about you that I don't understand? Rehearsal connects the individual to the bigger picture. It puts us in direct contact with one another, and spoken word creates an in-between space for us to practice these remixes, these collaborations as artist and audience member together. It gives us the space to try it out, to mess it all up, and to forgive each other enough to try it all over again. With the idea being that we can take the remix we, we construct here on stage and apply it to our lives off stage. Now, 
my mama, y'all could call her Miss Clara. Miss Clara is the first person who taught me that words do have creative power, but she took it a step further. My mama says, now Crystal, you have what you say, so don't say what you have, say what you want. Now from my mama's perspective, spoken word requires us to not only recite the histories that are so often pushed to the margins. It requires that we not only rehearse how to live with and cope with the immediate world that we're living in, but that we also exercise our imagination. How can you reimagine relating to one another? How can we reimagine what it is to love? How can we reimagine power? So Hamilton, this is the question I'm leaving you with today. I want to know, will you be bold enough to write? Will you be bold enough to speak? But most importantly, Hamilton, I want to know, what is it that you dream? Because see, I see things. Sometimes with my eyes open, but mostly in my dreams. And I'm still searching for that happy medium that supposedly lies somewhere between the silence I'm smothered with daily and these onstage screams. And unless you know what it is to have to struggle to validate your existence, unless you've cried yourself to sleep because being poor makes your family a statistic, unless you wear your heart on your sleeve and wrap your insecurities deep inside your chest trying to find the strength it takes to keep on resisting, unless you know how to smile while you bleed and distracting the crowd like a magician, unless you've worked three jobs and gone to school full time to stay abreast of the competition, unless you you learn to listen, then you will never understand that every poem I write is a love poem. See, the doors that I kick down ain't just for me. Spoken word has become something more than a personal form of cheap therapy, and you're probably right, I do take myself too seriously, because if I don't, no one else will. So please believe the words that I speak are serious, and I'm serious about those being words of love, being words of proof for the young lady that has been convinced to settle for some cheap substitute. For the young man that is this close to giving up on the truth, every word that I speak is spirit made flesh, and with my every breath I'm striving to give you something besides an excuse. Realize I want to hurry and do my time on the front lines before my bravery and my sanity start deserting me. Because I know what it is to be stuck. I know what it is to be trapped when ain't nobody worried about you. See, there will come a time when you're going to have to know how to encourage yourself. Because most of the time when it comes to love, you can't depend on nobody else. And you can't save somebody's soul if you done sold out yourself. See, I do write love poems. But for real, I just want to write. I just want to live. And maybe I don't write about what it is I'm living. Maybe I write about what it is that I want. And I just want to love. Because it's like the weight of three worlds in the pit of your stomach when you feel like you're all alone, but you're not. See, I've been searching for you like a shepherd seeks after his sheep. I'm up here swinging so you can rest easy. It's your ship to sleep. The doors that I kick down ain't just for me, but don't feel obligated. I wouldn't be here if someone had not done the same for me. And even though I get angry, I'm not going to leave you behind. And if I get two steps ahead, it's to make sure our vision's in line. It's to make certain our supplies get here on time. If I leave while you rest your eyes, if you wake and I happen not to be here, if you wonder where I go, when I promise to stay, don't fear. I didn't tell you a lie. Remember, I walk ahead to test our steps. I check the sparkling booby traps they've set. Because even if I stumble, you can still learn from my death and keep moving. I do write love poems, y'all, but I love you enough to tell you the things that you don't want to hear. I love you enough to stay by your side when you wish I would leave because that would mean you wouldn't have to tell your story. But for real, they can keep their little fame. I'm on the battlefield for the glory. And they can keep their little maps. My arms span this globe. And they can keep their clever raps. My mouth is full translating soul. I do try, y'all. I try hard to write things that'll help you get lifted. I want to speak in electric currents that will shock you with their friction. But it's cruel to sing songs to a broken heart, and tonight, my heart is heavy. So keep that in mind when I get loud on stage, it's because I'm thinking of the times I should have spoke up, but didn't. I'm thinking of the times that pride sealed my lips and I should have begged forgiveness. But perhaps in the meantime, you could learn to pay attention to your convictions. I thought I told y'all before, this heart has been damaged beyond recognition, but this soul was not destroyed. So don't waste your time window shopping for that good stuff you can't afford. You won't find our dignity for sale in your local corner store. Yes, I have tasted failure while simultaneously smelling the success on their breath. And I have seen dreams resuscitate life while mine have suffered a horrific death. I have been down. But 
When the time comes, I know exactly how to lively up myself. When they sound the alarm, I know how to strap up my boot, put on my mask, and tighten up my belt. So if the fire I got scares you out of loving me, and your first instinct is to start judging me, please think twice. I don't get up here to make friends. I never learn to play nice. And you can mark tonight as the night that I spoke it into existence. If your eardrum feels like it could burst whenever our future is mentioned, count yourself blessed. You heard it here first. Every poem I write is a love poem, even when all I can remember is them laughing at our struggle and them playing in our trouble. But while they busy pointing and laughing, we'll be sneaking and snatching. While they sleeping and napping, we'll be plotting and grabbing. We're gonna reclaim the kingdom before Babylon realizes what happened. We get on stage or behind a pulpit or in front of a classroom because it's easy to speak the truth when folks is paying and clapping. Personally, I'm interested in a little less chatting and a lot more action. We apologize for repeating our mistakes and it's not the same thing as repenting. But each day, each page, Every I love you, I say, is a chance for a new beginning. And baby, I'm taking mine. So Hamilton, will you write? Will you be bold enough to speak? But most importantly, I want to know, will you continue to dream with me? <laughs>